Welcome to Meet the Candidate. I'm Chris Clark, President and CEO of the Queen Creek Chamber of Commerce. Today we're joined by QCSD School Board Candidate David DeHorty. David, welcome. Thank you. Good morning. Thanks for taking the time to be with us today. You're running for school board here in Queen Creek. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Who are you? Where'd you come from? Um, well, I am originally from Illinois. I was the youngest of six children. After graduating from high school, I joined the Marine Corps. Uh, when I was in the Marine Corps, I met my wife. She's from Illinois originally, too, but uh, I was home on leave in Illinois, and she was living here and back visiting family, and we just hit it off and been married for 33 years now. Uh -huh. um, probably the reason I got out of the Marine Corps is because of her. It's just a lot of people do it, but it's hard on a family moving around the country and around the world. So. Um, well, I was in the Marine Corps. I served in Desert Shield, Desert Storm. I has also attained the rank of Sergeant, E5, and was selected to drive for a Brigadier General oh. uh, for a little while. Did that for about a year, and it was very good duty. Got to see a lot of things I normally wouldn't have seen. Um, I do come from a family of teachers. I have two siblings that are retired from teaching. One retired from teaching math in Illinois, and the other retired after teaching special ed for 42 years. Uh, in Chicago area and then she finished in Wisconsin. Um, I also have two in-laws that are teachers. One's partially retired music teacher and the other one teaches third grade in Northern California. My own daughter is a special education teacher up in Washington State. Huh? And uh, she married a gentleman in the Navy so they he's stationed there so that's where they settled in Washington State where she's a teacher. Um. That sounds great. Um, I'm stuck on your daughter marrying a Navy person and you're a Marine, so um, I know there's some rivalry there. That must have been something. Not much. And uh, uh, our other daughter's a nurse over at Desert Banner, and my own son, he is trying to get in the Marine Corps now, trying to get into the officer's program. Very nice. Um, so children are grown. Yes. Um, how long have you been living here in the community? Um, we lived in Gilbert in 98, and we moved out to Queen Creek in 2018. Been here for five years. Well, almost six. Be six next month. And um, so why, why run for school board? Why run for school board? Well, um, one, I think that the district can do better. The uh, scores have been declining. Uh, I believe since 2014 or 2015, our scores have consistently gone down in the district. Um, there is a lot of overcrowding. As I started this journey and collecting signatures, talking to some parents and listening to some of their concerns, um, it's being addressed, but I, I think as a board and as a district, it can be better. And so what type of changes would you like to see? Well, at one of the meetings, one parent was telling me that their children spent almost 29 days preparing for and taking standardized tests. And that is almost a sixth of the school year. If we had a good curriculum, if the teachers would follow the curriculum that we set, um, that's developed, of course, by the uh, superintendent and the um, administration with divine goals and that is taught I think the test should take care of themselves I'm not sure where you grew up Chris but uh, I took the Iowa, Iowa standardized tests in school and we didn't have any prep time it was testings next week and you show up you took the test the number two pencils the scantrons and we took the exams we didn't have weeks of prep to take these tests and the district is using something called um, beyond textbooks, which is internet-based. And it's from another district, and I'm not sure if that's what our district needs. I think we need our own curriculum to follow. And I think the declining scores from when beyond textbooks was first implemented proves my point. How long, um, I'm not familiar with that program. How long do you think it's been in use? I think it's uh, more than 10 years. Oh, okay. Um, and um, the test scores, part of, part of that issue um, is that the state legislature and the federal government have both tied funding to um, test outcomes. Do you think that's something that you would work towards changing? I is think that that's possible to change? 
Well, I think anything's possible to change. It just takes a long time, and um, you have to convince a lot of people to get those votes to get it to change, but I think it can be done. Um, funding necessarily should not be tied to test scores. Um, that, yeah, was an unintended consequence of trying to raise performance across the board and only fund schools that perform well, and then um, it, of course, is with most things, turned into something else altogether. Yes. Um, and so uh, you mentioned overcrowding. Um, it is one of the fastest growing school districts um, yes. in the state and um, perhaps in the nation. Um, but um, what do you think can be done there? Um, well, we are building a lot of schools. Um, we are adding uh, additional space to some of the schools that are in the district now. Having been to some of the meetings, I listened to the construction reports. And myself, I am wondering if uh, we would not be better served at this point with some portable classrooms. Um, like I said, we spent a lot of time in Gilbert. My kids went to Gilbert Public Schools. Uh, Mesquite High School at one time had, I believe at their peak, 14 portable classrooms in the parking lot. And I drove by there as it happened to be in that neighborhood a couple months ago, and I think there was four left because that um, school population has started to shrink. Um, another problem with Queen Creek Schools District is there is a lot of students coming from out of district. I believe it's upwards of 25 percent. Um, I believe we should be at capacity, but um, you know maybe we need to restrict the out of district students from coming in so that we don't have this huge overcrowding going on in the schools. I believe I was talking to one parent, and at one time last year, the uh, Chrisman High School, one of the newest ones. They were holding classes in the hallway. Another gentleman I talked to said that his daughter was standing, or was it her son, was standing on the school bus because the school bus was so full. And these are issues that need to be addressed. And restricting the out-of-district students to keep our class, class sizes manageable for the teachers. Um, so um, stopping the out-of-district kids. Um, restricting, not stopping. Restricting um, versus say um, everybody come in and construction though. So part of the construction problem is that the money is funded by the school facilities district and um, department, and um, uh, there's limited funds there. And then we're only eligible every few years. Yes, and they only build the shell of a school. Um, and so do you think it's possible to have a bond in order to build um, faster or um, would you be uh, opposed to the bond and in which case it would be just restricting um, uh, I'm not kids? fully opposed to the bond but right now I would be until we get the out of district under control once we um, get the out of district under control and we see what our students need, then we can decide if we need a bond to build more if it's for the ones that live in district. Because part of the problem with the bond, or not problem, but the bond is paid back by people that live in district. It's not paid by the people that live outside of district. Um, and speaking of which, um, they are out for override now. And so what are your thoughts on the, on the override? I think the override would be good at this point. It might get the teachers the help they need in the classroom and help uh, reduce the classroom sizes to more manageable levels for these teachers. Um, some of the classroom sizes I'm hearing are upwards of 35 students. That's a lot for one teacher. And maybe with this override, they can get some assistance in those classrooms, hire some more personnel, and get these class sizes down to something that's manageable. And then, you know, if a teacher has less students, she can spend more time with those struggling and those scores will come up. Well, David, we've covered uh, quite a few topics here. Yes, Anything sir. Anything that we haven't touched on that you wanted to get to? Anything we haven't touched on? Um, parent involvement. I think we need more parent involvement in the schools. Mm. Uh, I think COVID was a wake up for a lot of parents to see what was going on in the classrooms. Uh, myself as well learning what was going on and what was being taught. I don't believe we have CRT in our district, and I think it's outlawed in the state, which is good. It's a bit of a revisionist history. Um, 
so that's one subject that I don't think we talked about as parents. And I think we need transparency with the parents. The schools should not be keeping secrets from the parents. And like I said, I'd like to see more parent involvement. Uh, I was in a classroom. I was actually studying to be a teacher from when I retired from law enforcement. And I spent a week in a classroom. And um, I thought I could better serve the schools in a position on the board as opposed to the classroom to being in there. But seeing kids sleeping in class, they're on their cell phones. Mm -hmm. Our district doesn't even have a, a district-wide cell phone. A cell phone policy? Correct. Mm -hmm. So, and um, uh, that for one needs to be enforced, a district-wide cell phone policy. Um, where can people find out more information about your campaign? Um, there is a Facebook page, 3 for Queen Creek, and also a web page, 3 for Queen Creek as well. The number 3? Yes. 3 for Queen Creek? I believe it's 3 for QC. 3 for QC. And we're actually down to 2. <laughs> Um, myself and Nick Tooley had our petitions challenged, and I went out and showed that I actually had enough enough to uh, stay on the ballot. And in in court, I had to go to court. Um, somebody challenged my petitions, and uh, Nick's was challenged too. And uh, Nick had to withdraw. And so those are the signs that we see with the three names on it. Yes. Okay. Heidi Lee is the other one. Heidi Lee. Very good. Well, David, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate your time. Thank you for having me, Chris. Appreciate it.